Um, good day, everyone. Today, my topic is about common ENT manifestations of systemic diseases. For more information and further reading, um, you may check this reference. So this is the outline of the lecture. Chest pain of myocardial infarction can appear as suffered pain to the neck, clavicle, and mandible, and it can be localized to the mandible and teeth. This is just one of the many systemic diseases that manifest in the ENT and head and neck region. And so a close collaboration between ENT specialists, rheumatologists, and internists is suggested to improve the diagnostic and therapeutic management of these patients. Several granulomatous diseases have a predilection to involve the tissue of the airways. More common ones include vaginal granulomatosis, Churg-Strauss syndrome, and sarcoidosis. These diseases are often characterized by a local inflammatory response in the airway, particularly in the upper nasal passages. Vaginal granulomatosis is a necrotizing granulo granulomatous disease with vasculitis that mainly affects the upper and lower respiratory tract, the lungs, and the kidneys. Rhinologic symptoms of patients with vaginal granulomatosis may include nasal congestion or blocked nose, rhinorrhea or discharging nose, and anosmia, which is loss of smell. These symptoms may progress to rhinitis. Sinusitis is the inflammation of the sinuses, which can cause facial fullness, pain, headache, halitosis, and some will present with purulent nasal discharge. Recurrent inflammation of the cartilaginous septum can lead to septal perforation. And with further loss of the septal cartilage, leads to loss of nasodorsal height, known as saddle nose deformity. Pathologic manifestations include otitis media with effusion or with suppuration, which leads to conductive hearing loss. Now, polychondritis can also involve the auricular cartilage, presenting as thinner redness and swelling. This can later on lead to cartilage loss and will lead to loss of pina elasticity. Vaginers can also present with neuropathies that can involve the facial nerve. On physical examination, there will be problems of facial expression on the affected side. Examination of the oral cavity may reveal a red to purplish hyperplastic gingival lesions with petechiae. So this is known as your strawberry lesions. These lesions can lead to periodontal attachment loss that will manifest as tooth mobility. In the airway, the subglottis and the trachea are more commonly affected and usually presents with hoarseness and stridor. On laryngoscopy, you will see narrowing of the airway as in subglottic stenosis like this case and tracheal stenosis in this case. Churg-Strauss syndrome, also known as allergic granulomatous angiitis. This affects small to medium-sized vessels and occurs equally among men and women at the mean age of 50 years. Churg-Strauss syndrome is characterized by a triad of bronchial asthma, eosinophilia, and systemic vasculitis. Churg-Strauss syndrome mainly involves the nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses in the head and neck region. Rhinoscopy may show nasal congestion and polyposis. This could further lead to obstructive sinusitis. And patient may complain of nasal crusting that is somewhat severe because even with um, aggressive debridement, it will usually um, recur within 24 to 48 hours. Sarcoidosis involves multiple organs. This is a granulomatous disease of unknown etiology that most commonly affects the lungs and the lymph glands. Histology will show infiltration of giant cell tuberculoid granuloma without caseous necrosis. Patients would usually present with swallowing problems, voice changes, and dyspnea. Evaluation of the neck may reveal multiple and large cervical lymphadenopathies, goiters, 
and this goiters is associated with symptoms of hypothyroidism. Chronic form of the disease involves inflammation of the brain, the spinal cord, and the optic nerve, and this is termed as neurosarcoidosis. This may affect a number of cranial nerves, where the facial nerve is most commonly affected. Patients may complain of facial weakness on the affected side associated with um, deafness and vertigo. Involvement of the nasopharynx can compromise the eustachian tube function. This presents as ear fullness and decreased hearing. So this is an endoscopic view of the nasopharynx on the left. So this is the lesion on the nasopharynx showing you its proximity to the eustachian tube opening. Otoscopy will reveal middle ear effusion. Autoimmune and inflammatory diseases may also affect the ENT and head and neck region. SLE is an autoimmune disease which is more common in females. This involves different parts of the body, particularly the skin, the joints, and the viscera. Cutaneous manifestation, known as the butterfly rash, is a pruritic maculopapular rash along the sun-exposed area of the face. It is usually the first sign of the disease. Now, 75% of patients with SLE suffer from oral complaints like serostomia or dry mouth and soreness. Oral lesions and ulcerations may also be found. Epistaxis may result from casting of the nasal mucosa, which will further lead to nasal septal perforation. Laryngeal and tracheal involvement is rare, but when they do occur, patients present with dysphonia and hoarseness. This could be secondary to true vocal cord thickening, paralysis like this case. And um, cricoarytenoid uh, arthritis. Rarely, dyspnea and stridor may be a presenting sign of subglottic and tracheal stenosis. So with the narrowing of the airway, the presentation is stridor. Heat enlargement of the parotid can occur, like so. So there's swelling and redness of the parotid gland, and this could be confused with acute parotitis. An examination of the neck may reveal cervical lymph nodes. Relapsing polychondritis is a rare rheumatologic disease of unknown etiology that results in progressive inflammation and destruction of the cartilaginous structure. So basically, anywhere in your body with cartilage may be affected. However, the most common site would include the ear, nose, and respiratory tract, and the joints. Painful swelling of the auricular cartilage and uh, recurrent nasal um, crusting and epistaxis and septal perforation this will ultimately lead to saddle nose deformity. You see the loss of nasodorsal height because of the loss of the septal cartilage. Airway involvement may present with dyspnea and stridor as in asthma or airway stenosis. Patients with immunodeficiency are at risk for fungal, bacterial, and viral infections, and they have high rates of certain malignancies. These are often more aggressive than the ones that are occurring in the immunocompetent ones. Most common form of oral mucosal lesions secondary to immunodeficiency is oral candidiasis. These appear as creamy white, cheesy like lesions in the buccal mucosa and sometimes on the hard palate, the gingiva, the pharynx and even the esophagus. Patients may complain of burning sensation and dysphagia. Slight bleeding may be observed when these lesions are rubbed or scraped off. This can also lead to dysgeisha or known as altered sensation of taste. Immunocompromised individuals, particularly those HIV patients, have high risk of recurrent aptus ulcers. These are painful 1 to 2 centimeter ulceration involving both the oral cavity 
and the oropharyngeal mucosa and usually persist for months. Oral hairy leukoplakia is a condition caused by Epstein-Barr virus. It presents as hairy white patches on the tongue, although it can affect anywhere in the mucosa of the oral cavity. Oral nasal sinus infection is common and severe in immunocompromised hosts. Sinusitis, as discussed previously, presents with facial fullness, headache, fever, halitosis, and mucopurulent discharge. Now, opportunistic fungal infections of the paranasal sinus, commonly causing invasive fungal sinusitis, they present with nasal cavity crusting like this, and a patognomonic darkened or black middle turbinate. Sinusitis could complicate into orbital abscess or cavernous sinus thrombosis. This presents with orbital swelling, pain, headache, blurring of vision, and restricted eye movements. Immunocompromised patients may have middle ear and mastoid infections, presenting as ear pain, ear discharge, headache, and this may progress to meningitis or brain abscess. Reactive lymph nodes can also be palpated in the neck. Now, non-infectious manifestations could include salivary gland diseases presenting as serostomia or new growths. Neuropathies commonly will present with hearing loss and facial nerve palsy. With the advent of um, HIV antiretroviral therapy for the treatment of HIV patients, there is the occurrence of HIV-associated um, lipodystrophies. In the face, there is lipoatrophy, where there is loss of um, buccal fat pad. And on the back of the neck, the dorsal cervical fat pad becomes hypertrophied. So this is called the uh, buffalo hump. Immunodeficiency increases the risk for malignancy. Patients may develop lymphoma, which presents as multiple fast-growing um, lymph nodes in the neck. Skin cancers like um, squamous cell carcinoma, like this, and basal cell carcinoma may appear as non-healing ulcerating skin lesions. Kaposi sarcoma, on the other hand, manifest, manifest as a purplish, reddish skin lesions. These are painless spots and um, vascular, um, usually uh, caused by uh, HHV type 8. A major defense mechanism of the nose and paranasal sinuses against infection is the mucociliary system. Thus, disorders of the mucociliary function will lead to some serious chronic problems like chronic rhinitis, sinusitis, otitis media. Cystic fibrosis, on the other hand, affects the mucous component of the mucociliary transport rather than the cilia themselves. This presents with chronic lung disease, pancreatic insufficiency, intestinal malabsorption, chronic sinusitis, and still with nasal polyps. Now, treatment of systemic diseases can have several effects in the ENT and head and neck region. Immunosuppressive therapy, like the following, increases the prevalence of oral opportunistic um, infections like fungal infections and um, reactivation of latent infect viral infections like uh, herpes zoster oticus. Immunosuppressive treatment of most cancers will directly or indirectly affect oral health and function. They will present as mucositis, like this case, this is stomatitis, and uh, further lead to smell and um, swallowing problems, diminish appetite, and increase in susceptibility to infections. The following are the long-term effects of some cardiovascular drugs in ENT and head and neck region. They present with salivary dysfunction, taste disturbances, gingival enlargement, and some with mucosal changes. Okay. 
Tuberculosis caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis mainly affects the lungs, but it can affect any part of the body. And in the head and neck region, laryngeal TB develop usually in the presence of severe pulmonary TB. And this is secondary to expectorated secretions containing the organism. However, most patients seen today with laryngeal TB are without pulmonary symptoms or a history of pulmonary TB. Thus, infection can be a result of hematogenous or lymphatic spread. Patients come in with hoarseness, dysphagia, and dyspnea. And on examination of the larynx, they appear edematous with moth-eaten appearance of the mucosa. Recurrent and superative middle ear infection, not responsive to antibiotic treatment, is suggestive of TB otitis media. On otoscopy, it will show multiple perforations of the eardrum with purulent um, discharge. TB can get disseminated to the lymph nodes and can cause abscess formation and ulceration. And this is known as your scrofula. COVID-19 caused by SARS-CoV-2 presents mainly a lower respiratory tract related symptoms like cough, dyspnea, chest tightness that could progress rapidly to ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome. However, COVID-19 can also present in the upper respiratory tract like sore throat, nasal congestion, rhinorrhea, anosmia, dysgesia, headache, and other symptoms of allergic rhinitis, especially with the newer variants. Because of the non-specific nature of these um, ENT manifestations, diagnosis and treatment of these systemic diseases may be delayed. Thus, a multidisciplinary approach is needed to improve the outcome. Thank you.